connected with the same. As that creature has furnished so many religious stories in the East, as the ancient faiths of Asia and Egypt abound in references to it, we may reasonably look at some remote similarity in the ideas of worship between the Orientals and the sons of Aaron. That one of the ancient military symbols of Ireland should be a serpent need not occasion surprise in us. The Druidical serpent of Ireland is perceived in the tower brooch, popularised to the present day. Irish crosses, so to speak, were alive serpents, although tradition declares that uh, the, all the serpent tribe have ceased to exist in Ireland, yet, as Mrs Anna Wilkes writes, quote, it is curious to observe how the remains of the serpent form lingered in the minds of the cloistered monks, who have given us an unparalleled specimens of ornamental initial letters, as are preserved in the books of Kells, Ballymote, etc. End quote. A singular charm did the reptile possess over the imagination of the older inhabitants. Keating assures his readers that, quote, the Malaysians, from the time they first conquered Ireland down to the reign of Olive Fuller, made use of no other arms of distinction in their banners than a serpent twisted around the rod, after the example of their Galilean ancestors. Unquote. And still, we recognise the impression that Ireland never had any snakes. Solanus was informed that the island had neither snakes nor bees and that the dust from the country would drive them off from any other land. With the same authority avers that no snakes could be found in the Kentish island of Thanet, nor in Crete. Morrison, in 1617, went further in declaring, quote, Ireland had neither singing nightingale nor chattering pie nor undermining mole. End quote. Bishop Donat of Tuscany, an Irishman by birth, said, quote, No poison there infects, nor scaly snake creeps through the grass, nor frog annoys the lake. End quote. As to frogs, they were known there after the Irish visit of William III, as been called Dutch Nightingales. Even Bede sanctioned the legend about the virtues of wood from the forests of Ireland resisting poison. And some affirm that for that reason the roof of Westminster Hall was made of Irish oak. So James Ware said two centuries ago that no snake would live in Ireland, even when brought there. Camden wrote, quote, Nilus hic angus, nec venomatum quiquam, end quote. Though adders might creep, creep about, no one dreamed they were venomous. It is popularly believed that certain tribe once abounded there. Some naturalists contend that Ireland was cut off from the continent of Ireland. Sorry. Some naturalists contend that the that Ireland was cut off from the continent of Europe before the troublers could travel so far to the northwest. In all tradition, it is held that Nul, the fortunate husband of Pharaoh's daughter Scota, had a son, Gael, who was Britain by a serpent in the wilderness. Brought before Moses, he was not only healed, but was graciously informed that no serpent should have no power wherever he or his descendants should dwell. As is here of noble descent, subsequently removed to Aaron that this would be sufficient reason for the absence of venomous plague from the island of saints. But granting that the rep reptiles once roamed at a large there, how come they extirpate thence? Universal tradition Ireland declares that St. Patrick drove them all to the sea, and various as well as often humorous are the tales concerning that event. The Welsh monk Jocelyn in 1185 told how this occurred at Crucorn Ackle, the mountain of West Connacht. For the saint, quote, gathered together the several tribes of serpents and venomous creatures and drove them headlong into the western ocean, unquote. Others indicate the spot that the sacred isle near Sligo, in Ishmura, Patrick's Mountain, Crow Patrick, shares this honour. Geraldus Cambrinus, who went over to the Irish Sea with Henry II in the 12th century, having some doubt of the story, mildly records that, quote, Patrick, according to common report, expelled the venomous reptiles from it by the Baculum Jesu, end quote, or historical staff rod. The saint is said to have fasted 40 days on a mount previous to the miracle and so gained miraculous power. Elsewhere, Geraldo says, quote, some indeed conjecture with what seems a fi flattering fiction that Patrick and the other saints of the country cleared the island of all pestiferous animals, end quote. As however, there was the notion that there never were any but symbolic snakes, it was held sufficient to assert that the apostle absolutely prohibited any such vermin coming near his converts. An Irish historian of 1743 gives the following differences of belief about the affair. Quote, but the early writers of Patrick's life have not mentioned it. Salinas, who wrote some hundreds of years before Patrick's arrived in Ireland, takes notice of this exemption, and St. Isidore, 
Bishop of Seville in the 7th century copies after him. The Venerable Bede in the 8th century mentions this quality but is silent as to the cause. End quote. The non-residence of snakes on the Isle of Thanet was accounted for as a special blessing of St. Augustine who landed there on his mission to the Saxons. But also a tradition ascribed the Irish deliverance to the blessing of Hartrick. Yet, when Geraldus evidently treats the stories of fable, St. Colgan felt compelled to, quote, give it up, end quote. Ancient naturalists relate that Crete was preserved from snakes by the herb Dittany driving them away. In a work by Dennis Paris of 1843, Le Monde and Chant Cosmic de History National Fantastique et Moyen Age, the following remarks occur, quote, Aaron the Green, the Emerald of the Sea, the country of the Tour de Dan, counts for little at the time, nor arrests the attention of the rapid historian, yet there happened a wonder which ought not to be ignored by the rest of Europe, and Monsieur Brunetto relates in simple fate, which forbids any brevity in the narration. Now you must know that the land of magical traditions, this Ireland, is a region fatal to the serpents. Should some evil spirit carry them thither, all the reptiles of the world would perish on its shores. Even the stones of Ireland become a happy talisman which one can employ against these animal nuisances, and the soil upon which they are thrown will not be able to nourish the serpents. End quote. But they are competitors for the glory of reptile expulsion. St. Kevin, the hero of the seven churches of Wicklow, is stated to have caused the death of the last serpent by setting his dog Lupus to kill it. This event was commemorated by a car stone placed under the east window of Glendalough Cathedral, delineating the struggle between Lupus and the snake. This stone was stolen by a visitor on the 28th of August, 1839. Again, the gallant conqueror of, or conquered by, the Irish Danes, King Brian Bromieve, we are assured by an ancient manuscript, had a famous son, Burka, who destroyed all serpents to be found in Ireland. This is mentioned in the Earth story of the Battle of Clontarf. St. Caedo of Brittany was an expeller of serpents from God, and Dewey de Gozon expelled them from Malta. Even Columba did the same good service for Iona as others of his disciples did for Donegal. On the tombstone of the Grand Master Malta, 1342, are the words Draconis Extinctor. Among the heroes of the Serpent Destroyers were also St. Clement, the vanquisher of the Dragon of Metz, St. Marcel, the deliverer of Paris from the monster, and St. Romain, whose exploits were immortalised over the Gargui of Paris, not to mention speak of German, Spanish, Russian and other saints, Michael. The serpent is the divine wisdom of several lands. One meaning, however, for the revelations of a miracle can be found. Keating, the Irish historian, fancies the, the whole must be taken in a figurative sense, referring to expelling from the converse of the old serpent, the devil. O'Neill also observes, quote, The conquest which the Irish apostle of Christianity is said to have gained over the serpents of Ireland has doubted, but if it means that he gained victory of the serpent worship, the story seems to be entitled to be credit. End quote. Ancient Ireland was certainly given to serpent worship, although the pre-Christian origin of some Irish crosses we may understand why these were accompanied by twine serpents. Quote, it is not a singular circumstance, says Keane, that in Ireland there be no living serpents exists. Such numbers legends of serpents should be bound, and the figures of serpents should be so profusely used to ornament Irish sculptures. There is scarcely a cross or a handsome piece of Irish ornamental work which has not had a serpent or dragon, end quote. The singular cross of Calamary Kilkenny exhibits there on two Irish serpents. The front of Cashel illustrates the same mystery. The writer saw several stones at Cashel Cathedral which sculptures snakes, one large specimen or ornamenting a sarcophagus. The crozier, or pastoral staff of Cashel, which is found last century, bears a serpent springing out of a sheet or vagina. The end of the sheet is adorned with wreathing serpents. In the handle, a man stands on a serpent's head with a staff, at which the reptile bites. This staff was like that of a Roman augur, or a Trujan, or Babylonian priest. Rash's sculpture, Crosses of Ireland, refers to one cross at Clonmel, having four serpents at the centre, called round a spherical boss. Several instances were known to which the serpents have been more or less chipped away from off such crosses. A serpent occupies a large space in the beautiful Irish sculpture stone, Clon Magnus or Clon Magnus. Not long ago, a stone serpent was discovered with 12 divisions marked for the 12 astronomical signs, reminding one of the Babylonian serpents circling the zodiac. Several Irish 
fonts have upon them is sculptured serpents. Glass snakes of various colours have also frequently turned up. When the author was at Cashel some years ago, he saw among the fragments of the ancient church a remarkable stone bearing near the face sculpture of a female, head and bust, but whose legs were snakes. This object of foreign worship was not very unlike the image of the Gauls, uh, which is to be seen in Paris, though that goddess had two serpents twisted around her legs with their heads reposing on her breasts. The Caribs of Guadalupe were noticed by the Spaniards worshipping a wooden statue, the legs which were enwreathed by serpents. Origa is sometimes represented with legs like serpents. The apraxis of the Christian Gnostics of the early centuries had serpents for legs. Rude carvings of snakes adorned a pyramidal stone overlooking the plains of Dundalk in, Loch, in Loud County. This is on Killing Hill. The marvellous megalithic temple of Newgrange, one of the finest antiquities in Ireland, has Curl's Separatine Monument. The legend still floating, um, but among the peasantry of the country parts of Ireland, frequently referenced to the Piaster Piaster worm, serpent, or pest. Ulpest. This creature is always in some lake or deep pond. The Fenian heroes are recorded in ancient songs that have killed many of them. Fionn, in particular, it was a traditional dragon killer of Ireland. One monster in the lake is said, quote, It resembled a great mound, its jaws were, were yawning wide, but there lie concealed, though great is fury, a hundred champions in its eye pits. Taller in height than eight men, with its tail, which was erect above its back, thicker than the most slender part of its tail, than the forest oak, which was sunk by the flood. End quote. Fionn was inquisitive as to the country of which the reptile came from, and it was occasion of the visit to Aaron, he was answered, quote, from Greece to demand battle with the Fenians. End quote. It seems to have already swallowed up a number of Fenian warriors and finished and finished by gulping down Fionn, but the hero cleverly opened the side of the pest and released himself and the imprisoned men and then killed it. After this, the poet added, quote, of all the pest that fell by Fionn, the number can never be told, end quote. Fionn elsewhere figures in the chase of Schlieve Gullin as being after one in Loch Coon. Quote, we found a serpent in that lake. His being there was no gain to us. On looking at it, we approached. Its head was larger than a hill. Larger than any tree in the forest were its tusks of the ugly shape. Wider than the portals of a city were the ears of the serpent as we approached. End quote. He described the serpents in Loch Cullen, Loch Nae, Loch Rea, as well as the blue serpent of Aaron and one at Hout. He kills two at Leninny, one in the Mummering Ban and the other at Loch Harra, and beheaded a fearful creature who cast fire at him from Loch Leary. Quote, if you banished from the Ras, each serpent he went to meet. End quote. Another poem left this version. Quote, a serpent there was the lock of the mountain, which caused the slaughter of the Fianna. Twenty hundred or more it put to death in one day. End quote. It demanded a ration of fifty horses a day for meals. Croker, in his Legend of the Lakes, gave a modern allusion to the myth which relates to Loch Katine of Killarney. A boy is asked, quote, Did you ever hear of a big worm in the lake? The worm it is fakes then, sure enough, there is a big worm in the lake. How large is it? Why, it's big as a horse and has great mane upon it, so it has. Did you ever see it? No, myself never see these serpents, but it's all one for sure Padraig of Finine did. End quote. There is in Wexford County a Loch Nup Pashta. O'Flaherty calls to one known in Loch Mask, the Irish crocodile. No one would dream of bathing in the lake of Glendalough, as a fearful monster lived there. And there's also Ligna Pashta in Derry. The present uh, Loch Nabasht was formerly Loch Nabasht in Roscommon. Near Donegal was Lina Pasht, as well as Kilkenny of Toberna Pashta. A Pasht was seen in Kilclonley of Kerry. Some names have changed more recently as Loch Nut of All or Lake of the Devil. The Dragon of Wantley in Yorkshire was winged and had 42 iron teeth, with a sting in his tail as long as a flail, says an old ballad. Scotland, as the author of the Sculpture Stones, shows a furnished number of illustrations like that of Dracolateria. Among the score of megalithic serpent Scotch monuments, some have crosses as well. There is also the well-known Erton Serpent of Glen Ficon, Loch Nell, near Auburn, in view of the triple cone of Ben Crocon, being 300 feet high and sorry, 300 feet long and 20 high. 
Professor Blackley note, noted thus, quote, What lies the mighty serpent here? Let him who know it tell, with his head to the land and his huge tail near the shore of the fair Loch Nell. Why lies it here, not here alone, but far to the east and west? The wonder-working snake is known, a mighty God confess. And here the mighty God was known in Europe's early morn, in view of Crucon's triple cone before John Bull was born. And worship new in Celtic ground, with trumpets, drums and bugles, before a trace on lorn was found of Campbells and MacDougalls. And here the serpent lies in pride, his hoary tail to tell, and rears his mighty head beside the shore of fair Loch Nell. End quote. Visitors to Ardnishire and to Ireland cannot fail to recognise this old-time symbol. The mound of the Clyde of Ardnishire is the head remains of a serpent earthwork. A lithic temple in serpentine form is seen west of Boot. Some connect the cup and this sorry, superstition with this worship. Furlong, whoever thinks of a relationship in spectacle ornament with the phallic, though one form of inscription is decidedly draconic. Serpent stones put into water were until lately used by the Hebrides to cure diseased cattle. The Great Serpent Mound of the North, but at Achnagall, near Inverry, was opened by Mr. Skeen. Serpent worship was ca common in Argyll, as that part of Scotland was Irish by con sorry, consciously and racial descent. Keating tells us that the Gael, arriving from Gladys, um, got the name of Gloss, or green from a screen spot in his neck caused by the bite of the serpent in the days of Moses. South Britain can still exhibit the vestiges of serpent worship. Among English fonts bearing reminiscence are those of Stokes Golding, Alpington, Fitzwarren, Tintagel, East Haddon, Locking and Somerset, and Avery. The tree first represents George and the Dragon, or rather Horus of Egypt, piercing the monster. In the last case, the serpent's tail is round the font. The Vicar of Avery remarks. Quote, on the ancient Norman font of Abury Church, there is a mutilated figure dressed apparently in a druidical priestly garb, holding crozier in one hand and clasping an open book to his breast with the other. Two winged uh, dragons or serpents are attacking this figure on either side. May not this be designed to represent a triumph of Christianity over druidism, in which there was much veneration entertained for the serpent and serpent worship? End quote. Interviews with the late Archduke of Wales, a man of curious learning and traditional lore, the writer heard much of serpent adoration in ancient Britain. Whatever the race or races might have been, the mystic creature had friends in the British Isles, though chiefly in Ireland. Long ago, Brian's mythology taught that, quote, the chief deity of the Gentile world was most, almost universally worshipped under the form of serpent, end quote. A rapid glance may have taken over fields ancient and modern, illustrating human respect for the serpent. This devotion is not confined to the old world, being found in the new. It is not limited by time, ranging over all periods. It is not particular to any race or colour. Aboriginal races, are so-called, have from remote antiquity honoured the serpent. All over Africa, the vast regions of Tartari and China, the hills and plains of India, and the whole extent of America, the Isles of the Pacific, alike in its sweltering tropics and ice-bound coasts, is the same tale told. Civilised man, whether beside the Nile, Euphrates or the Indus, in the deserts of Arabia, the highlands of Persia, the plains of Syria or the islands of Greece, among the tribes of Can Canaan, the many named peoples of Asia Minor, the philosophers of Athens and Alexandra, the mariners of Phoenicia or the warriors of Rome, bow to the serpent god. All religions past and present recognise the creature. The Reverend Dr. Deramo in The Serpent of Eden sees direct serpent worship in the, quote, the worship of the serpent as a god in himself and for his own sake, quote, but indirect worship in, quote, the use of veneration of the serpent, not for himself, but merely as a symbol or emblem of some one or more of the gods, quote, end quote. He esteems that the Egyptians indirectly worshippers. The Greeks had a symbol of Apollo, Minerva and Juno. The Ophites of early Christendom saw it in a symbol of Christ, or the mundane soul. The creatures spoke from under the tripod of Delphi. It moved about the holy bread in the altar of the Gnostics. It was a living and moving symbol of Egypt. It had a place of honour in the temples of Tyre, Cyprus, Babylon and India, and it crawled in the sacred cave of Typhonus, and its eyes glistened with the shadows of Elephanta. As the Apophis, pierced by the god uh, 
Horus and as the emblem of Typhon, it was the evil spirit of Egypt. But in the Uranus of Osiris, it was a good one. The Egyptian faiths several thousand years before Christ also included serpent worship. The serpent symbol distinguished uh, Sabbatism. It was in Egypt the illustration of new birth as it cast his skin and thence gave to man a hope of resurrection. In the Book of the Dead and the other Egyptian scriptures, it was frequently mentioned. The great serpent on human legs was a solemn mystery. The Agatha Daemon was the guardian of the dead. Flinders Petrie, in 10 years digging in Egypt, when referring to the fact that the oldest pyramid, Medum, was erected in the principle of the Mastaba or tomb, declared that in the architecture of that very ancient structure, quote, there was a cornice of rare serpents, which is familiar in later times, unquote. This points to nearer, perhaps, of seven thousand years ago. The neighbouring Assyrians paid no less devotion to it. It is known in the land of Canaan that there was the same Ophelatria, as the Hebrew scriptures testify. Cyprus and Rhodes, not less than all Phoenicia, abounded in it. Christianity was early affected by it in Gnosticism. If, if, sorry, if a fenice relates to the Gnostics kept, quote, a tame serpent in a sister or sacred ark, and when celebrating their mysteries or the Eucharist, piled those on a table before it and then invoked the serpent to come forth, end quote. The Ophites were derived from the Gnostics. The Chinese for the lunar period represents a serpent. The word for hour is the symbol of the serpent. The dragon still presides in China. Persia, which is supplanted in Syria, copied tents much of the serpent ideas. So did the <coughs> Semitic conquerors of Babylonia at an earlier period to receive their theology and letters from the Akkadians. The Zenvesta, three-headed serpent, had to yield to the sun god. Ahi, the great serpent, was in opposition to the Zoroastrian deities. Bel and the dragon have a fixed place in Oriental literature. Bel and the serpent may still be discerned by excavated Pompeii. Clemens Alexandrus remarked, quote, If we pay attention to the strict sense of the Hebrew, the name Eve aspirated signifies female serpent. End quote. India, however, is down to our time the high seat of Ophelietria. The Amorots, Rhodes, and Petries are esteemed, quote, fiery dragons of wisdom, end quote, as magicians and druids were of old. Abfussel states that there are several hundred localities where carved figures of snakes were objects of adoration. There are tribes in the Punjab that will not kill a snake. Vishnu is associated with the reptile in various ways. Shesha, the serpent king with 100 heads, holds up the earth. The Nagas are given up in this particular worship. The Buddhist poem, Nagananda, relates to the contest between Garunda, king of the birds, and the prince of the Naga, or snake deities. India, beyond the Ganges, has, as in Cambodia, magnificent temples in its honour. The soul of a tree in Siam may appear as a serpent. Quote, in every ancient language, writes Madame Velasky, the word dragon signifies what it is now, does the Chinese, and so on, being, being who excels in intelligence. End quote. The brazen serpent... Raising serpent in the east, divine healer, Astru Lapis cannot do without the serpent. In the hell of the Persians, says Hyde, quote, the snake ascends in vast rolls from this dark gulf, and the inside is full of scorpions and serpents. Quote, end quote. In the poem Vasubla of the Edda, we read, quote, I know that there is a Nasanda, or hell, in an abode remote from the sun, and the gates which look towards the north is built in the carcasses of serpents. End quote. The ancient Greeks borrowed their serpent notions from other lands through the medium of Phoenician traders. Isid's monster, the Echinada, was half a speckled serpent, terrible and vast. The Atmedon of Constantinople, showing three brazen serpents intertwined, is said to have been taken from the Greeks from the Persians at Plateau. Apollo, the Greek Horus, fights the python of darkness, as a sun god should do, but owns a serpent symbol. Euphides notes that in processions, quote, the fire-born serpents leads the way, end quote. Etoria, of which Rome was a colony, probably borrowed a serpent worship from Egypt. It was there and elsewhere a form of sun worship, as the het het reptile hibernates to renew its strength and casts off its slough to renew its youth, as the sun is renewing at spring. And yet, as Rushkin says, quote, the true worship must have taken a dark form when associated with the draconian one. 
End quote. Africa is well known for it to be still under the cruel bondage of serpent worship and not the evil apostles kind. The Negro's forefather appeared to him as serpents. Over the Pacific Ocean, the serpent is carved in stone was adored. Tales in Fiji Island spoke of a monster dragon dwelling in a cave. Samoa had a serpent form of the dragon dinghy. Even in Australia, though in a ruder style, the serpent was associated as an Oceano with the creator of an idea. America astonished Spaniards of the 16th century with its parody of their own fate. The civilized Aztecs and Peruvians adored serpents. Vistiputli of Mexico held, like Osiris, a serpent staff. Coactuzzi, wife of the great father, was an immense serpent. The name of the goddess Jicuntandal means female serpent. Both the wilder North American Indians bowed to the serpent, as may have known from Square's serpent symbol. A serpentine earthwork in Adams County, Ohio, upon a hill is a hundred feet, a thousand feet in length. Mounds in Iowa, arranged in serpentine form, extend over two miles. A coiled serpent mound by the St. Peter's River, Iowa, is 2,310 feet long. In the desert, in Colorado, have been reported lately the remains of a temple. It is said that the capitals for the two remaining pillars are the stone serpents' heads. The feet of the columns look like rattlesnakes. The pillars seem to be rattlesnakes standing on their tails. Europe was doubtless indebted to travelling dragons of wisdom. For this mystic lore, how or under what circumstances, we know not. Whether the older and the long passed away races are thus learned is the question. But the people far removed from their own era are but survivals of remote or tribes were acquainted with what may have been believed if only from serpentine mounds or piles of stones in serpentine form. Rome carried forth a serpent in war since one of its standards was a serpent on the pole. Long after in the church processions on Palm Sunday the serpent figure mounted on the pole. Scandinavia had its midgard encircling the globe with its body. The Norse serpent Yamungar had a giantess for a mother, and evil loci for a father. Moscovitz and Lithuanians had the serpent gods, while Livonia bowed to the dragon. Olus Magnus records serpents being kept in sacred buildings of the north and fed on milk. Thor was able to kill a serpentine embodiment of evil by striking it with his tow or hammer. In pagan Russia, the serpent was the protector of brides. St. Helerian of Ragosa got rid of the dangerous snake boas by lighting great fire and commanded reptiles to go to the top to be burnt. One of the symbols of both Hercules and the Celtic who was the serpent. The German white serpent gave wisdom to the eater of it. In Gaul it was reverenced. Nathar was a serpent god. Priests, druidical or otherwise, had a catechus of two serpents embracing each other. A Gaulish goddess had, like in manner, two snakes about its legs and body. Druids kept live serpents for pious purpose. A French writer knows how one twists around a lignum, as can seem now also in Pompeii. Gaulish coins represent a serpent under or over a horse, the sun emblem. As the Quran informs us, Elvis was brought to the Eden in the mouth of the serpent. The Pythia, or a serpent of Delphi, was a priestess. Snake offerings were made to the Bacchus. The phallic character is exhibited in the serpent and Mayans as the apple of love in its mouth, upon which creature the Virgin is represented as, as treading. France is not without its snake destroyers. In Brittany, St. Suliac, watching the emergence of a great serpent from its cave, put his stole around its neck and cast it to the sea. Up until 1793, the procession of clergy of St. Suliac had now annually take place where a silver cross was lowered into the serpent cavern of Le Guive. Emma Bow tells of a serpent um, time dance he witnessed in Greece. A number of women and children formed the tail of the serpent, which incessantly revolved around itself without extremes ever joining. The ancient ornaments an egg is seen with a serpent coiled round it, as if to fertilise it. All readers of Welsh Druidism are aware of the part played therein of this creeping creature. It was the Celtic dragon Draig. It was the gliding god. Cerdwen is associated with the Caron serpent. Avery gives us the serpent of the sun. The Glanidar, or a serpent's egg, is a great mystery of the Druids. Serpent worship has been taken up to the heavens, where constellations have been named after the creeping silent creature. There is a Hydra, killed by Hercules, but not till it poisoned with his venom. There are the volumous folds of Draco, 
and there's the one held by Ophicus, which sought to devour the child of Virgo. There's a seven-headed Draco, each forming a star in the little bear. Thus we may exclaim in Herschel, quote, the heavens are scribbled over with innumerable snakes, unquote. Classical mythology tells a python which sought to devour the offspring of Latona, whose child Apollo became the eternal foe of the would-be destroyer. Jupiter himself became a dragon to see Persephone. Minerva carried a serpent on her breast. Medusa bore snakes for curls in her hair. But what's the meaning of it all? Betham mentions the fact that a Celtic word for a serpent is expressive of his wisdom. The same meaning is in other languages and the legends of various nations. And knowing man, one verse of the mysteries was called a serpent. Was it the size which distinguished it in the animal creation that brought it this reputation and made it a fitting emblem of the Easteric system? It was a symbol of productive energy and was ever associated with the egg, symbol of progressive elements of nature. The male was the great father, the female the great mother. O'Brien and others see a close connection between solar, phallic and serpent worship. The author of the Round Towers of Ireland states, quote, If all these be identical, where is the occasion of surprise in our meeting the sun, phallus and serpent, and the constituent symbols of each occurring in combination embossed upon the same table and grouped under the same architrave? End quote. The connection of the serpent is with the starry host has been observed. Its scales resemble revolving stars. Like them, it moves swiftly but noiselessly. The zodiacal girdle appears to be a serpent devouring its own tail and was always deemed of a fiery nature. Some have supposed the story is monstrous reptiles, the object of dread and conflict. They have originated from traditional records of gigantic and fearful looking saurians or serpents that once lived on earth and some lingering specimens of what might have been seen by earlier tribes of mankind. The Atlantosaurus, Emanus, was 100 feet long, with a femur 2 yards in diameter. The serpent was certainly a token symbol of an ancient race celebrated for wisdom, giving rise to the naming of the learned after dragons and serpents. The Jew of the Welsh triads exclaimed, quote, I am serpent, unquote. According to J.H. Becker, Quote, the tree, five, seven, or nine-headed snake is a totem of a race of rulers who resided over the Aryan Hindus. The snake race was that of the first primeval seafarers. The fair and wise serpent race became the earliest stage of traditional rulers and civilizers. End quote. And Ovid sang, quote, As an old serpent casts his scaly vest, wreaths in the sun, in youthful glory dressed. So when a Clyde's mortal Mould resigned, his better part enlarged and grew refined. End quote. It must be remembered that even traditions bear testimony to the variety of races in the uh, island. The Celts were among the later visitors, coming certainly after the Iberian, whose type remains in southwest Ireland. One of the earlier tribes brought knowledge from afar, or what may be conjectured, some shipment from the east found temporary sojourn there. Dr. Finney justly remarks. Quote, the absence of such reptiles in Ireland is remarkable, but their absence could certainly not have originated a serpent worship through terror. While everything artistic or religious in old Irish designs, from the wonderful illumination of the Book of Kells to the old Celtic god ornaments, represent the serpent and indicate, therefore, some very strong religious idea being always upmost in connection with it. End quote. A Cypress Amulet gives a goddess nude and winged, having serpents for legs. A Typhon has been seen with the extremities of two twisted snakes. A Buddha has been indicated with two twisted snakes for appendages. The Greek poet also describes the divine stubborn hearted Echnida, half nymph with dark eyes, fair cheeks and half a serpent. The mother of an ancient Scythian hero was a serpent maiden. A story was told in 1520 of a Swiss man being enchanted in a cave and meeting a beautiful woman whose lower part was a serpent who tempted him to kiss her. As we see report in France, a lady has there a familiar form of a serpent, able to answer her questions, and cleverly writing down replies with the point of its tail. There is no saying how this marvellous creature may enter in future theological con controversies. A book published in the reign of Charles I had this story. Quote, Ireland, since the first inhabitation, was pestered with a triple plague to it, with great abundance of venomous species, copious store of deals visibly appearing, and infinite multitudes of magistrates. End quote. The saints share in the trouble thus described. Quote, Patrick taking the staff or wand of Jesus with his sacred hand and elevating it in a threatening manner, as also the favourite assistant of agents, he gathered together in one place all the venomous beasts that were in Ireland, 
after he'd draw them up before them to the most high mountain hung over the sea, called him in Crook Ang Achel, now Crook Patrick, that is, Patrick's mountain, and from thence he cast him down into the steep precipice to be swallowed up by the sea. End quote. The Druids, or Tuas, or other troublers, fared nearly as badly as the snakes, as the author affirmed. Quote, of the magicians he connued and reclaimed many, and such persistent carbal he rooted them out from the face of the earth. End quote. From the Book of Leinster we gather the intelligence that three serpents were found in the heart of Mackie, the son of the Great Queen. After they had been killed by Dan Keck, the bodies were burnt and the ashes were thrown over the river Barrow, which so boiled that it dissolved every animal in it. As tradition of ours, St. Kevin, when he killed one of the remaining serpents, threw the creature into Lake of Glendlock, which got the name of Loch Nepesh, or Serpent Loch. Among the sculptures and impost mouldings at Glendlock is one of a dog devouring a serpent. Snake stone had been found consisting of small rings of glass. The Ammonite fossil is known as the snake stone. Wendell Kilkenny shows the persistence of ancient ideas in the wilder parts of Ireland. Quote, Even as late as the 11th century, says he, we have evidence of the prevalence of the old religion in the remoter districts and in many of the islands of our western coasts. Many of the secondary doctrines of Judaism hold their ground at this very day as articles of faith. Connected with these practices is a vivid memory still retained of once universal Alpetria, or serpent worship and the attributing of supernatural powers and virtues of particular animals, such as the bull, the white and red cow, the boar, the horse, the dog, etc., the memory of which has been perpetrated in our topographical denominations. End quote. The Irish early Christians long continued the costume of entwining their old serpent god around the cross. One has said, quote, The ancient Irish cross are alive with serpents. Their green god snake is Galglas. The word... Dreglos means the tower of the green god. The old Milesian standard of a snake twisted around a rod may seem to indicate a phallic connection with the salve. The Book of Leinster asserts the same distinguished the power of serpents expulsion on behalf of St. Columba as others have done for Patrick or any other saint, saying, quote, Then he turned his face westward and said, May the Lord bless the island and its, in and its dwellers. And he banished toads and snakes out of it. End quote. Thus, we have seen in Ireland, above most countries of the earth, retained a vivid conception of ancient serpent worship, though some of the myths were naturally and gratefully associated with the refuted founders in pure fate. Quote, Search where we will, says Kenneth C. Lewis, the nuptial tree around which coils the serpent is connected with time and with life and a necessary condition, and with knowledge, the knowledge of scientific priesthood, inheriting records and traditions hoary, perhaps with the snows of a glacial epoch. End quote.